Hi everyone, welcome to Heart in Art. Today we are talking all things electronic music. So the episode title is EDM versus the underground. We're going to think about how the scene has changed from way back in the 80s up until now. So I am welcoming as a guest today, Model Citizen. Hey, Model Citizen, originally Hello. from Toronto, Canada. Nice to have you here. He's an Asia-based DJ and producer. He's played alongside the world's top DJs and producers, including Sasha, Sven Baith, Anand Kataneo, Tim Mason, Chris Lake, Vivid, and many more. Model Citizen has played Japan's top clubs, including Woom, Agaha, Club Asia, Velours, Warehouse, and countless other live houses and small clubs. He's delighted audiences around the world in places like Thailand, Canada, and Austria, and of course, Ibiza. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Hello, Danny. Thank you for having me. It's absolutely wonderful to be here. Oh, it's awesome. Like, I've wanted a DJ on the show for ages. Uh, I've always been into dance music in a, in a big way. And you're the first person that we've had on here that's a DJ and producer. So, pretty happy about that. Um, Fantastic. Well, uh, I'm a big fan of your show. I love what you're doing. And uh, it's a great honor to be here. Absolutely. Oh, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. How did you get into uh, pro producing and, and dance music? I have always been into music, uh, probably like everyone. Um, I started listening to music, I guess, when I was around eight, you know, eight to ten. I was listening to tape cassettes, I think. The first cassette I bought was, this is, I mean, <laughs> I guess this is kind of showing my age when I talk about <laughs> tape cassettes. Um, ACDC, Back in Black. Um, <laughs> my mom quickly uh, confiscated it from me, uh, that from me when oh. she heard the, the lyrics. Um, <laughs> so I, they would pollute your little mind. <laughs> yeah, she didn't mind the track Dirty Deeds, but then when Big Balls came on, she was like, nope. That is not suitable for a 10 year old, but it was too late. I had already heard the song. I was hooked. Yeah, Rock that's it. It was in my blood. <laughs> um, I bought a guitar when I was 14 and started uh, just kind of self-taught, um, just playing, um, you know, the, the rock classics, the, the Pink Floyds and the, the Led Zeppelins, uh, the Neil Youngs. Oh, so that's where the prog came in, right? I guess so, yeah. Prague at heart forever. And uh, I got in a band when I was in high school. Um, my first band in high school was called Purple Zig. It was a, a parallel abomination of, of Pink Floyd. We, we desperately wanted to be Pink Floyd. Um, we really did, yeah. And we, we, we wrote original music. We wrote some uh, original content, and um, that was a lot of fun. We did a couple of live performances. I remember my first live performance uh, was at, actually uh, in the auditorium in front of the entire student body. And I was about two minutes into the first song, and I could tell that there were some strange look, looks on the faces of the audience. And then my friend, who was in the first row, walked up on the stage, walked over to my amplifier, and actually turned the amplifier on. And then this, this guitar started blaring out at way too loud, coming like way up over the mix. It was a complete disaster. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it got better after that, for sure. Um, and then when I was uh, in university, I formed a, a cover band. We were, uh, we were called On The Bus. And we played oh, okay. 90s grunge uh, hits, you know, Nirvana, Pearl Jam. We did some uh, classic rock as well. That was a lot of fun. We, we were a bar band, we got paid, you know, we played on Saturday night. Um, people got really drunk at our shows. We weren't the most talented band in, in, uh, in yeah. town, but we were probably the most fun. People ended up getting the most drunk at our shows, which was kind of like a badge of honor for us. <laughs> <laughs> 90s grunge as well. Oh, it, just it, was, it was messy. Like, uh, yeah, there's these, um, these two young kids who have a, um, a a show on YouTube and they they basically record their reactions to like 90s music and the last one that I watched was them watching like uh, Nirvana smells like teen spirit and this kid was just loving it like he couldn't believe that this had passed him by and he was just like oh <laughs> it was I, a joy to watch. I love that I've seen a few of those there's these two um, African-American gentlemen and they do a similar thing and they were listening to yeah 
fools anima and it's the same thing they're just, they're just like wow mind's blown <laughs> so yeah so then when i was um traveling around europe i, I visited england actually in 96 i visited my friend yeah. and she was uh going to university in lancaster oh and okay her boyfriend was a dj and they were throwing parties this is way back in, in sort of mid uh late 90s and uh, they, they took me to a rave in Blackpool. And um, it was amazing, you know, everyone was dressed up and uh, there were, you know, everyone had their, their faces painted and it was just this incredible atmosphere. And, and this, this kind of like a circle, a circus environment. I'd never really experienced anything like it. And the music that they were playing, it was like this, like sort of like mid nineties acid techno. It was just so good. And I was just hooked right from the beginning. Um, yeah. And that was it. That was it. Like just from right from the start, I, I loved it. And um, that was kind of my first uh, rave experience. Um, I moved to Vancouver uh, in 98. Um, and I, 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 I immediately jumped right in, started going to outdoor rave parties uh, in the mountains of British Columbia. Uh, doing oh, wow. all sorts of crazy things. Yeah, like we, you know, we'd be driving in the mountains for an hour, and we'd come into this valley, just in the middle of nowhere, and there'd be these lasers and, and this music coming out of the, the sound system. And it was like, it was like, oh my gosh, it, like the aliens have landed. You know, it was just like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it takes me back actually. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Uh, just that, um, you know, that feel. I remember as a kid kind of like lying in my bed at night when I was supposed to be asleep with my Sony Walkman on, like listening to the radio. And that was the first time that I heard sort of like techno and trance music and just being like, what is this? Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Do you remember the song or the artist? Or? No, I don't. Okay. I wish that I did. I wish that I did. But um, yeah, I thought, oh, I, I need to find out more about this. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. You remember the moment. <laughs> Those are the best. So I moved to Japan in uh, 2003. I sold all my stuff in Vancouver. I sold my car. I sold all of my worldly belongings. And I packed up everything into two suitcases and uh, moved to Tokyo. And because I didn't have my guitars, um, I had a laptop and I started making music on a crappy PC using um, Sony's uh, loop-based program called Acid. And then I bought a Mac mm -hmm. in uh, 2006, yeah. started making music in, um, uh, on, my, on my Mac using Ableton, and then I started DJing. I started throwing uh, small parties with a DJ friend of mine named Will I Am in places like Nakamegado and Ebisu. Um, and then around 2010, I teamed up with Vivid, uh, a DJ and producer based in Tokyo, and we started producing bigger parties. Um, and within like a, a year of that, I was you know, playing main stage at um, Club Asia and playing Bloom and Kageha and their house and all these places. Um, yeah, so I kind of Very went from there. Fun. What I like about your story as well is, um, you know, one of the criticisms that, that often people who aren't in the electronic music level at DJs and producers is they're not real musicians, you know, but you, it's like so many people that you speak to have either like, are, like play other instruments as well or started off um, as like a rock musician or whatever and then, tra you know, kind of transferred um, over. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because um, I never really considered myself a great uh, musician, so to speak, or even that great a yeah. guitar player. But you're right. A lot of us have come from, you know, that kind of background where, like, most DJs, you know, didn't start as DJs. They were, you know, they played piano or they played guitar or they played drums or something like this, and, and kind of, um, it, you know, it, it seems like most of us producers and DJs have, have kind of like moved into the DJ um, or production scene from, you know, some sort of strange or obscure musical background. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> yeah. So are there certain um, like producers that you have a lot of respect for and, you know, you know, tracks that you always include in your sets, etc. you know? Um, I have a... Kind of, yeah. Which DJs inspire you? Well, lately it's a lot of the new, um, you know, the, the new techno heroes, the new techno gods. I, I listen to and I'm and, and, and influenced by uh, people like Adam Beyer, uh, Leighton Giordani, 
Bart skills, deformation, um, but you know, also the, the classics as well, the, the Daft Punks, the Dead Mouses, uh, Nine Inch Nails, I'm a huge fan. I, I love hip hop as well. Mm, um, yeah. You know, we mentioned rock, you know, Pearl Jam and Nirvana, I was a massive influence. I mean, Rush, I was a huge Rush fan. Um, mm. But you know, more recently, um, you know, I guess more of the, the uh, like what I'm playing in my sets, uh, there's this guy named Stan Kola, for example, who's this progressive uh, techno artist who I love. I've been playing him a lot in, my, in uh, some of my recent sets. Um, yeah. yeah, and just, you know, some of the more new artists. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing I love about the scene is that it's constantly evolving. The sound are, are constantly progressing. Um, the production quality is just getting better and better. And, you know, if you, if you put your favorite artists uh, into Spotify, for example, you know, every week you get all these amazing new releases. So it's a scene that is still... You know, it's still happening, it's still evolving, uh, it, and, and it's very exciting. And that's kind of what drew, drew me to it in the first place. And I find the music now as, as, as quality uh, and as fresh uh, as it's ever been. Um, so, yeah. But I, I have other influences, of course, like yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm influenced by writers um, and, and artists, and, and maybe I guess we can, we can draw from all sorts of different areas of our our lives in terms of, of art and, and influences, not just not just music. Oh, exactly. You know, it's funny. I remember when I first met you and we started to chat about uh, like electronic music, and one of the first people you said was Adam Bay, and I was like, no way, because I used to, I remember when uh, I used to have kind of um, residencies in Newcastle, and and I had so many of his like records, actual like LPs. And I would just go into the record shop and the guy would have like the latest ones he produced lined up for me waiting. Um, love it. <laughs> that is amazing. What a great story. I mean, yeah, that Adam yeah. Beyer is a legend. I think he's Swedish and he's been around a long time, but he's really kind of like evolved into like this, this new sort of like techno. Um, yeah, I think it was very much like a very minimal techno when I first yeah. started listening to him. But um, yeah, it's it's very different now than than from back then. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The sound has evolved tremendously, which is exciting. For sure. <laughs> so um, let's kind of have a look at this this whole idea of underground and EDM then, because it's like it's one of these. I don't know if it's a real division, um, but there are certainly people who kind of really do not want to be associated with EDM, electronic dance music, who would say that they're, you know, more aligned with underground dance music. Yeah. So what's, sure. um, what, why do you think uh, that, that this particular style of music was traditionally underground? I think electronic music has always kind of in its essence been counterculture, uh, has been sort of against the, the popular norm, um, the commercial side of music. Um, I mean, I think back in like in, in the 90s when we were going to, to parties, literally they were underground, you know, they were in basements and in warehouses and this type of thing, which is probably where the term came from. And, you know, the, the, the term electronic dance music um, wasn't necessarily uh, the brand that it's considered today. Back, you know, when in, in the 90s and the 2000s, electronic dance music encompassed all music, you know, techno, mm. house, minimal, yep. dub and bass, uh, dubstep, all of this, these, these, these genres. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a great question. I think electronic music in so many ways is a critique on the times and you know, just as much as it is a modern day perception and reflection of reality, um, you know, and, and everything that we're going through today, it's just, it's just un unprecedented what's happening in the world today with, with uh, the situation. And yeah. I think, you know, people, music lovers, young people especially, you know, the, the millennials and the Gen, the Gen Ys are subjected to so many uh, opinions and, and ideas and, and, and just getting bombarded with information that, you know, they're, they're, they're striving for something, for, for something different, for a purpose. And I think dance music um, can kind of stir the imagination in that way and, and offer kind of that, that alternative. And, and, and I try to express that in my music and my DJ sets, and, you know, with the goal of, of creating something that is a reflection uh, of reality, but also, um, you know, 
although it might have a little bit of visceral bite to it, also, you know, it's still going to be fun and, and allow people to, you know, party and enjoy themselves. Yeah, that's it. Cause yours, um, I mean, Model Citizen is, is based in this, this kind of construct called Ultra World, right? Um, can you just talk to us a little bit more about that and, and kind of the idea behind that? Yeah, well, that's, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. I mean, we're in the 21st century right now, and it really is kind of a new world. And, and, and you know, there's, there's a lot of um, uh, ideas, interpretations, and opinions. And I feel like, again, especially the younger generation, they're, they're kind of being driven to um, just an ideal of, of, of pessimism and, and, and cynicism. And, you know, with, 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 with the way that the, the, the new branded EDM movement was, was heading and, and how commercial uh, that was, I think people wanted something a little bit more. I think party people, music lovers in general, were, were becoming disillusioned. And, um, you know, where the, where the rave culture of the 90s brought and, and the 2000s brought that, that groovy vibe, I think today's underground music scene is a little bit more, um, you know, uh, bittersweet, um, and it kind of again it reflects that new world and then it runs through all, you know, is pervasive through all social um, aspects of life. And um, I think Ultra World is, is very much an interpretation. Well, I, I try to make it an interpretation and a reflection yeah. of, of that. Um, again, in, in, with, with a bit of a, a positive spin, um, and you know, uh, with, with perhaps some ideal hope. Well, you know, to try to create that journey, you know, where we're going, you know, going through, you know, there's dark times, but there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We all need hope. <laughs> Definitely, we do. We do. <laughs> Particularly in these times. So I think you know, if art can't give us hope, then you know what can really? Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, art, art, is, art is hope. <laughs> So, you know, just to go back to this idea of, um, you know, commercialization of music and, and um, I just want to, I mean, <laughs> I actually hate asking this question because I know some people who are hardcore underground music fans will just be like, oh, what is it? What do you think that makes DJs like Sven Bate or Sasha so different from the likes of like Calvin Harris or David Guetta? Well, I think it's interesting because David Guetta, when he first started DJing, was a house DJ in Ibiza. And you listen to some of his older sets and they're actually very, you know, underground house. But, yeah. you know, the, 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 I guess what got rebranded um, into the EDM scene of, of the 2010s, it was just so insanely um, commercial and, um, you know, quote unquote, uh, profitable that uh, a lot of artists, you know, jumped in because there was a lot of money to be made. I mean, Steve Aoki is a really great example of that. You know, a guy who just, yeah. just, he does really well, just making a lot of money, you know, touring around, playing uh, the ultra festivals and this kind of thing. I think, and, and that's great. And, and that's, you know, that, I think that a lot of that was propelled by um, the American media finally catching on to um, you know, electronic dance music in general, um, but trying to kind of like rebrand it into this, you know, very sort of commercial copy thing that, that, that they put in a box and then play in a radio and, 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 and repackage and, and, and sell it to you, like right? a can of Coke, so to speak. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, you can go to, go to a show and get caked and ride an inflatable and, and have a great time. Um, but... <laughs> You know, the artists that you mentioned, you know, the Sashas and, and the, um, the Vitalix, uh, I'd like to hope that the model citizen is, is you know, slightly in that category. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. I've definitely noticed since around 2000 and I guess 15, 16, um, the, the, the music has moved back toward, you know, um, really great um, sound and techno and progressive. You know, there's a lot of artists emerging and who have emerged, um, you know, in the last three to five years. And, you know, I mean, up until recently, there were these really amazing festivals that happened in Europe with these tens of thousands of people. And the music was techno and house, you know, it was, it was kind yeah. of the, the return of, of um, for lack of a better way of saying it, good music. 
So I think everything goes in cycles. I think, you know, the, the, the kind of the, the quote unquote EDM scene um, was a limited thing. And I think now we're seeing a, a more kind of return to, to you know, um, what we had in the 90s and, and 2000s, but with, you know, a, 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 again, a more sort of contemporary, upscale, sophisticated sound and approach and idea. Yeah, I think, you know, that's a good point that you make about commercialization and shelf life in the, you know, when something is cookie cutter and, you know, does appeal to and um, has a broad appeal in that way or is fashionable, it's, it's only going to last so long. So, you know, that that's kind of a, a nice thing to come back to, um, you know, the, the more, let like you say, counterculture aspects of, of dance. Yeah. Um, yeah, because uh, when I think about dance, I always think, you know, that first that first experience is like, oh, it's, you know, I'm, I shouldn't be awake. I'm listening to my music. Like, it's kind of a naughty thing to do. And then, you know, fast forward to, un, you know, kind of um, underground raves and, and things like that. It's always something that, um, I don't know, it, it's got its own, like whole set of memories that go with it for me that uh you know put it put it to the side of oh this is this is not something that i have to be doing it's not something i'm supposed to be doing um you know it's kind of uh, a, this sort of exciting secret if you like <laughs> yeah absolutely you know people want people want that connection they want that that um connectivity you know they want they they you know, it, it's it's kind of ironic because even though technology has advanced and it's 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 so cutting edge these days, um, the the actual medium um, of, the, of the of the dance party or the platform of the dance party has been around for a really long time. You know? I mean, mm, you know, tribal yeah. gatherings were happening well before uh, <laughs> electricity was invented. You know, I mean, back in the uh, <laughs> the, the ancient um, uh, Greece, you know, they were they were you know gathering at temples and taking psychedelics and you know dancing for days and this type of thing. So I think again electronic music is just a response to what you know to human nature and and and, and humans uh, innate desire to connect and um, love and, and, and have purpose and meaning in their life and, and electronic music in many ways is just that that vessel, that medium, that platform that, that, that provides yeah. that. Yeah, I really like that comparison with sort of um, tribal elements and, you know, the kind of repetitive beats. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You can't, you, can't, you can't beat a good four to the four, uh, a four, four, four beat, you know, on a dance floor, you know, and that, 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 that's been happening way before, you know, we were able to uh, plug something in and make it much louder than the PA system. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to come to talking a little bit more about um, technology and how that's changed over time. Um, but before we do that, um, I just want to talk about genre and subgenre because it's something that gets pretty complicated at times in uh, in dance music. Um, so yeah, so I just wondered about like uh, if we can have a chat about you know why we have so many. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you think we need them all and why? Well, yeah, I mean, genres are an interesting thing because, you know, I think at the beginning it was house, techno, trance, drum and bass, dubstep. That was it. You know, those were the, the main genres of, of electronic music. Yeah. Oh, um, breakbeat. Breakbeat, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> if you want to go back before all of that, yeah, exactly. Breakbeat <laughs> yeah. or. or, or, or <laughs> and, uh, what was the King Tubby? What was he kind of like uh, that Jamaican sort of dance hall music? You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it'll come, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, now you've got kind of subsets of, of just if you take techno, which is you know, I guess um, the type of music that I like to play in my sets and make and produce. Um, you've got progressive techno, you've got uh, minimal techno, you've got melodic techno, you've got hardcore techno, industrial techno. And I think it's just, again, the evolution of uh, the scene and how various forms of music have converged. It's really a convergence phenomenon, isn't it? Mm. And, you know, when, 
when when acid meets house, you get acid house. You know, when progressive meets techno, you get progressive techno. Um, mm-hmm. What is a melody added to minimal techno? Voila, you know, melodic techno. And <laughs> <laughs> it, it's something that's happened, I think, progressively, but also kind of naturally um, over the years. And I love it. I, I think it's it's really um, important to constantly be you know pushing uh, the boundaries of the music and. You know, on the topic uh, topic of technology, I mean, we're only limited um, by the boundaries of our imagination. And again, technology is just the tools that we use, you know, to, to try and get to those, those boundaries and beyond. And yeah. I think genres and subgenres and, and sub subgenres uh, are are a result of you know pushing those boundaries and that convergence. Just think as well, they, you know, yeah, they, they, we have to have a language to talk about what we do. And when we listen to all these influences all the time, there's a greater familiarity, isn't there, with, um, with all of these uh, styles. So, yeah, you need that nuance in being able to talk about what you do. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Having said that, a friend, a uh, DJ friend uh, once said to me, and I think this is very true, there's really only two types of music, good, t- good music and bad music. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> so um, technology then, technology. What, um, well, let's start with, with you right now about your music production. Like, you know, what, what programs do you use at the moment? Um, you've, you've already described a little bit about your style, but if you could give us a little bit more around that. Yeah, sure. So when I first started DJing, I mean, I, I essentially went direct to digital. Um, I wasn't one of these type of people um, that, you know, evolved from records or, or, or CDs. I just I bought a, a Mac and I started making music on my Mac using a program called Ableton. Um, Ableton is an amazing program. It's made by a German software company called Ableton. Um, and I had just my computer and a little MIDI controller and that was it. Um, and now my, my DJ setup hasn't really evolved that much, but now I have a Mac, uh, Ableton Live 10. I have um, a Korg uh, Nano. A MIDI controller and okay. I use Native Instruments Micro Machine. Um, I have Native Instruments um, uh, audio uh, interface as well, which I use. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I think I guess my my setup, my my DJ rig is is perhaps a, a, a tiny little microcosm of the evolution of, of how. Uh, you know, electronic uh, music is, 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 has, is played today now in a live form. Um, yeah. it's, it's evolved a lot and the technology has really you know, pushed uh, forward, uh, not only you know, the styles and the genres that we were talking about, but just the actual sounds themselves have evolved so much. It's just yeah. you know, what some artists are doing today with the technology. Um, on the production front, um, I use Ableton Live 10 also for production, and I'm mainly in the box, which means most of my production happens uh, using software. Um, I use a lot of VSTs like uh, Serum, um, Diva, a lot of Yuhei uh, VSTs, uh, Waves, and uh, a lot of yep. native instrument VSTs, and sorry if I'm getting a little too technical for you. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, it might I, be for some people, but no. I'm enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, essentially, I use uh, mainly software now to make music as opposed to out of the box, which is using you know, synthesizer. Okay. You said um, a, a while back, you said you liked hip hop as well. Like, have you ever used Ableton Scratch when you've, uh, you know, when you played? I have not. Uh, I'm familiar with the product. I do love hip hop. Um, mm-hmm. And I have a lot of respect for, for Scratch DJs. They're amazing. I think they're artists in themselves, but it's just not <laughs> something that I'm very good at. Um, and I, I, I'm much more a listener and a fan of that product than I use it. <laughs> doesn't really sound great over prog tech, no, either, does it? <laughs> it's not really those two things, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm sure somebody can make it sound good, but probably not me. Yeah, probably not me either. I've never, I mean, I did, I had a go at scratching, but no, <laughs> the baby scratch. 
that's sure. probably where I'm at. Yeah. But if, <laughs> if there's any aspiring producers out there, I highly recommend them to check out Ableton. It's just an amazing yeah. program. That's really all you need to start making music. It's, it's just yeah. the bee's knees, and a lot of uh, the DJs of today are using it for production. Um, there's, there's really two main uh, digital audio workstations that are used today. It's, it's Ableton and um, uh, Logic, which is made by uh, Apple. Yeah. And Fruity Loops is also pretty popular. I mean, there's others. There's Cubase as well. But uh, I'd say the majority of producers use Ableton. Yeah. Is Ableton a bit more um, intuitive than Cubase? Because I, I, I very early on in my DJing career had um, production, like, um, I, I got taught to produce using Cubase and, and I remember virtually nothing of those classes. <laughs> <laughs> you and I would have gotten along well in class, I'm sure, sitting in the back, not listening, having a great time. <laughs> I mean, I tried, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cubase, I mean, all of the all of the, the DAWs in their latest iterations are amazing. I'm not a Cubase expert, uh, but um, I've heard the latest version of Cubase is, is really a different level. Um, a lot of really amazing professional producers use Fruity Loops, which used to be kind of considered, you know, the, the kids sort of program yes. for making music. But, you know, there's, there's some legitimately awesome producers that use that now exclusively. So I, I think, again, the technology uh, has evolved now to the point where every DAW that is um, you know, used by professional producers in 2020 is extremely cutting edge and, 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 and very powerful and, and uh, can make some amazing sounds. It's kind of like, um, I think Roger Waters said this in uh, Pink Floyd's documentary, Pompeii. He said, you know, a lot of people think that the, the, the machines control us, but it's not true. You know, we control the machines, and, and the machines are simply tools. And, and, and again, they're, they're a medium uh, for creation. And um, you know, the, the, the music and, and, and the technology are, are you know, um, in parallel, and they're, they're both evolving kind of at, at an exponential rate, which is extremely exciting and, and motivating yeah. to see. Yeah, it is. Yeah, definitely. No, I, you know, I, when I was thinking about this episode and talking to you, um, I just thought back to the days when I would cart my record bag up the hill um, to where I was playing with like barely like a quarter of my music collection in that bag and it would be so heavy. Um, and then fast forward to now where it's like I can literally take not only the tracks, but the actual hardware that I'm going to play on. <laughs> <laughs> and that move from analog to digital was massive for me. Um, I just wondered if, I mean, obviously you said you started with a Mac uh, and um, the software. I wondered though if you um, have seen a kind of like change in the way that people actually DJ or a change in the way that the software has impacted production. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, a lot of DJs today, uh, especially in the techno scene, uh, will, will DJ on the, the latest version of the CDJ, and you know, they, they show up at the USB, and uh, they, they play these amazing sets just you know on on the, uh, the CDJs. And I think that's it seems like recently that's that's certainly the way um, the scene has has, has evolved and, and evolving. Um, call me old school. I still use a laptop to DJ. I, I love it because you know it, it's it's very versatile and you can do a lot of interesting things with effects and um, dropping in samples and dropping in stems and you know multi layering tracks and uh, doing sidechain progression and, and EQing certain sounds and stuff like things. So for me personally, it's exciting to have the, the flexibility and the interoperability of using a computer to, to mix live uh, with the music. Um, but there's all sorts of ways to achieve a, you know, the, the same goal, which is create a, a, an amazing live experience for the audience. I think at the end of the day, you know, uh, playing live and using technology to, to, to make or play music is all about you know, just making sure that the audience is having a good time and, and being uplifted and being taken away to a new place or a special place and you know, taking them on that journey. Just making sure that you know whatever is going on in their life today, that they 
you know, they had that 90 minutes um, of, of, you know, kind of experience uh, away from all of that. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. Well, hopefully we'll come to a point where we can have live events with, you know, quite a few people in a room together again, because I think, you know, that experience of, uh, as a DJ, watching people and, and kind of reading the room is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, it's as, as wonderful as Zoom is in terms of like keeping everyone going. Um, yeah, just having that kind of feedback, I imagine, is is something that, that a lot of DJs are missing. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I mean, this year I've done all my DJ sets on Facebook. Um, yeah, you can you can check them out facebook.com slash Mike on 15. Um, or you can listen to my YouTube sets on uh, youtube.com slash user slash model citizens with an S plural. Um, and that, that's been great. Um, but you're right. It, you know, there's no substitute for live music and, and having people gather. And, 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 and I really know, I can't, can't wait. Uh, yeah. Going to be one hell of a party, isn't it? It really <laughs> is. It's going to be party of the year. It's going to be like Prince party like <laughs> Party like it's 1999. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to be 20, uh, 2099. <laughs> Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Hopefully it's 2021. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, so I will share the links to the um, to your Facebook and YouTube as well. Um, are there any tracks that you um, have out that you're promoting at the moment? Uh, not right now. Um, just check out my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to, to my YouTube channel. It's uh, Model Citizens um, on YouTube. And um, please check out my music. Please like and, com uh, like and comment my tracks if, if, you, if you like them. Uh, feel free to share with your friends. And I'm hoping to uh, drop some new music on Spotify later this year or next year. I'll keep you posted on that. I will eagerly await that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us today. Thank you, Danny. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, really great to see you again and, and I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Thank you. No bother. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.